What's up, everybody? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with Tony Campos. So, How you doing, brother? I'm all right. You know, it's funny. I've been told that we look alike by several people. I think uh, I don't agree with it, but similarities, I guess. I, I, I think if you squint, yeah. You know? <laughs> if you squint, yeah. You had you had a little too much to drink that night. Yeah, you know, you, you throw down a six pack of that and uh, squint. Yeah, see it. Uh, how you been, man? I know that uh, shit's kind of crazy for everybody right now with the quarantine and not playing shows, and especially that, you know, for you and the band that you've got a record out and that should be touring on but can't. Yeah, no. right? <laughs> yeah that uh, sucks. How have you been, uh, you know, I mean, I know musicians are usually pretty isolated, especially gamer musicians. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, the uh, as far as being locked down at home, um it's really not that much different for me from when i'm not out on tour because i never leave the house to begin with um you know i'll hit a drive through for food and uh you know i do most of my shopping online so you know it's not a whole lot different for me but the thing that really sucks is not being able to tour and like i'm usually out like at least six months out of the year and i've already been home longer than that so Shit. And, and we got this record that just came out, you know, and we're stuck, you know, we're stuck at home. So Yeah, man. and it's such a, you know, so much work went into that album. I mean, it's a, it's a heavy, it's a heavy emotional record and uh, also just a lot of work putting everything together. You know? And imagine you'd want to get out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just glad it's out there now. Uh, we had to delay the record a couple times and, you know, we pissed off some fans, but uh uh, I'm glad it's finally out there, and and like most of the fans feel that uh, it was worth the wait. So I'm I'm happy about that at least. Yeah, man. I was going to ask the reaction from the people. I mean, I loved it. I, I I got an early copy in the mail, thankfully, from some of the folks at you know team. But mm-hmm. um, it was just it was a, it was a weird experience for me, man, because I've been a big fan of the band, you know, since the beginning. I, I was going to tell you the story of. First time I saw you guys, I didn't know who you were. You were opening for, I think it was Power Man, Power Man 5000. Yeah. It was in Fort Lauderdale a long-ass time ago. Man. And yeah. I think it was Re- Revolution, I think it was the venue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember seeing it and just, I didn't know what was going on. You know, I saw Wayne's massive hair and everything, and but the, it was so loud. And like the, there was these giant cabs on stage and the bass that was coming out of it was making my shirt kind of like vibrate every time it was like i'm like what the fuck is this yeah. and uh met you after the show remember you gave me a pick it was one of those big purple triangle picks that said disco or uh Keep it's, funny. Yeah. It's, funny. it's funny because uh I, i've been kind of organizing around here and uh i had picks scattered everywhere and 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 i dug up some of those old picks from in the early days, I'd had to keep evil disco on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep evil disco. So, what was that about? Like, I mean, the whole you consider evil. that the music is disco. Yeah, well, you know that whole thing. Like, like a lot of things with this band, uh, that started out as a joke. Um, we were doing uh, one of, one of our first interviews. We were doing for a, a local magazine there in L- in LA. There, like I'm not in LA. Um, yeah, called <laughs> Rock City News. And uh, they asked us, how do you describe the music? And I jokingly called it evil disco. And it just stuck. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, it is. it has elements of danciness to it. Why not? And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of bounce to it. And Yeah, that, that, that four on the floor uh, kick drum beat, you know? Yeah, that, that definitely gets, uh, gets the ladies' the booties moving, you know? <laughs> But yeah, dude, I, I, you know, I, I, I saw that show immediately and like, wow, this is impressive. Like, actually, what was funny to me was that a large portion of the crowd left after you guys, before Power Man came on. I'm like, wait, but this is like, it's their, mean, show. <laughs> it's, it's their show. And I mean, it's not like it's too far apart of it. Like, you know, you can imagine that if the, like the opener was a rap group and then the closer was a metal group, then yeah, there's going to be a yeah. split. But I mean, both bands were playing heavy rock that was on the radio at the time, I suppose. And yeah, particularly Power Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. But um, you know, it, it was it was interesting to hear these recordings and 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 hear 
the 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 good job that uh, also Zero is doing with the vocals because I couldn't you know if I didn't read the notes it was hard for me to even be like is that Wayne or is that Zero I can't tell really yeah. was that yeah. the intention behind that yeah yeah it, it was the you know the Zero did a really good job of uh, capturing uh, Wayne's vibe and spirit um, not only. The, in the studio, but uh, also out on tour, man. So, yeah, I you can't say enough about the the effort that guy put into into this whole thing. Yeah, man. I mean, I was one of the few uh, that, like, when I first heard the announcement, I saw the mask and everything. I was kind of like, huh. Like, I was questioning it a little bit. But then once I saw some of the videos that were coming out of live shows and stuff, seeing you guys on stage and, and how it sounded and how it was being handled, that's when I was like, okay. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm I'm fucking I'm all in. It's it's because it is you know a tribute to Wayne. It, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That that that, that was the whole idea, and uh, you know it, it was uh, how do we d- deliver a Static X Wisconsin Death Trip experience 20 years later without Wayne? You know that was the big question, and um, I, I think you know with the mask in Zero's performance and, um, you know, having myself and, and Koichi and, and Kenny together again, uh, I think that that all combined to, to, to bring it back as, as close as we possibly could, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, and it was good. I mean, from the videos I saw, the perf- everything sounded great. Um, you know, I kept, I kept up with the band throughout the years as well, and th- even to the point where eventually we ended up which is funny enough, like the first time I saw you guys was at Revolution, and we ended up with my old band. We played a show together at Revolution, and I was huh. like, it came like full circle, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, you know, I never really understood kind of like what went down with uh, with band at that like at some point where the members started switching out, and uh, I didn't really understand what was going on. Like, I mean, you guys were doing well. I know that there was some personal beef. I'm sure that might have gotten in. I don't know about it. You know, I mean, I don't I'm not the type of guy to sit there and read headlines on like metal injection. Like I love metal injection, but I'm not sitting there looking for gossip. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just follow the music and then like I look up the oh shit, the new album came up, but there's new members. I don't know what went down, but um, mm-hmm. you know, there was there was like a disconnect where at one point I remember you were with Soulfly, because we also played with Soulfly with you in the band. Oh, yeah. We played out at I think it was Culture Room. Mm-hmm. And um you know, I, it, and Wayne was touring Static X stuff, but it, it was it was a whole bunch of other people that I'd never mm. heard of. You know, I mean, it was just kind of weird to me. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about like what happened and how that all went down, and like where you guys were at, you know, prior to him passing? I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to dwell on that stuff. You know, it's just, it's just a really bad time for for the band and for myself personally. Uh, you know, just the. the Long story short, uh, the band fell apart. Um, Wayne got really uh, uh, involved with drugs, and he, uh, you know, got got uh, uh, got addicted, and unfortunately, it cost him his life. And uh, you know, you can't really reach someone, um, yeah, that you, you can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. You know, and right. You, yeah, you, you can do whatever you, you you think you know will help, but it, if the person doesn't want help, they, they don't they're not going to take it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that's just the you know without going into the gory details. Yeah, yeah. I mean I've dealt with a lot of friends and, and family members that you know get addicted, man, and you know it's it they don't listen, and then, you know you no matter how you approach it, like. Yeah. As a family member, like I'm your, I'm your brother, like I'm your, un- you know, I'm your cu- uncle or cousin or whatever it may be, like I'm here, you know. There's no way that I don't have your best interests in mind, you know. What I mean, I have zero interest in trying to ruin your life or make you feel worse, and yet they're still, they just, yeah. you know, there's nothing, there's nothing there when it comes to it. I mean, unfortunately, uh, Wayne wasn't the first friend I lost because yeah. of drug addiction, um, so it, it was just like, you know, see, seeing. Uh, seeing it happen all over again to, to somebody else that you know that, that I'm close with, you know, and, and it sucks every time. 
So are you very ad- are you like strong advocate against you know drug use or of any kind? Are you like straight edge or you know? No, I'm not. Um, I've always had the position of do whatever you want, uh, but if it starts getting in the way of what you have to do, then uh, you know you need to start rethinking your uh, priorities. Yeah. Uh, and I got to a point with alcohol where it was starting to affect my performances on stage and you know, I had to dial it back. And, and now, you know, I'm just old and I can't handle the hangovers anymore. So <laughs> I, I, I got to dial it way, way back now, you know? So oh, I feel you, man. I mean, the only reason I'm having a beer right now is because it's my weekend. Uh-huh. It's, I'm like, it's my weekend. I can have one or two and then that, you know, that's it. But like, I used to go hard too. When we were playing shows at culture room or whatever, like that was, that was the peak of my my drinking and and you know experimenting yeah. with drugs you know because you're partying you're out with the band and you know you, people offer you stuff like hey let me get you a shot dude and mm-hmm. then, uh, yeah okay yeah <laughs> so easy to get caught up in that you know because everybody you know every night you know like when when you as a as as an audience member go to a show you you may go to a to a show what once twice three times a week maybe tops you yeah. know for us as musicians we're doing this every night so you know every in every town there's somebody new going hey man have a have a drink uh, smoke this do a line of this you know and, and when you do that every day it, it catches up to you man yeah and i mean i never you know, the only thing i ever did was a uh, drink and smoke weed um i you know like I stayed away from cocaine just because uh, I tried crack once when I was 13 and I didn't like it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and that was it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, done. I'm not going to do any more coke <laughs> after that. So I guess I got lucky, man, uh, that I avoided uh, that pitfall. Uh, yeah. And I've seen lots of friends get hooked on that and, and ruin their lives, man. Um, I mean, it's just... Yeah, you know, it, it it's easy to get caught up in, in in that shit, you know. Yeah, and it's and it's such an interesting thing that now, you know, we're 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 all locked down, right? We we're not going to shows. There's no shows to go to, and um, you would think that this would be a good opportunity for people to kind of take a step back and like, all right, man, I'm gonna meditate something, you know, I'm gonna take care of my health, you know. But what's what's happening is the opposite. There's this like vibe of doom and despair all around us so people are drinking and you know partying harder like they're just they're in their houses like i need to get out of there you know whatever it is that's you know they're freaking out about yeah i i can see how, how that that can happen too you know? you, you, but i for me i've i've always been a, a a social drinker you know like i don't really like drink on my own by myself you know like when I'm home, I hardly ever have a drink, you know, like I, I got a, a cabinet full of liquor that I hardly ever touch. Uh, if I get a wild hair up my ass, I'll, I'll have like a shot or two or tequila at the end of the night. But right. you know, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, that's good. That's healthy. But, you know, you, I've, I'm I myself have kind of drank a little bit more than usual. But, you know, I, I was looking into it and the alcohol sales numbers are way up. You know, I talked to friends of mine that are uh, working at breweries and, and other places like that. They're like, yeah, you know, we, we hit, took a big hit because we can't have a, our tasting room open. People can't come in, but outdoor sales are fucking crazy. Like, it's, it, they're busier than ever. People are expanding breweries now because they, they can't Demand. make enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's weird, man. It's a weird time uh, with, with everything like, mentally, mentally, not just like... Uh, Physically, everybody's worried about the virus and everything, and but just mentally, it just seems like there's a weird well, vibe everywhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, the stress of being locked up in your home 24/7 for months on end. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I saw I, I, I was uh, on the internet and I saw a meme uh, about uh, it, Jack Nicholson sitting at the bar. You know, that scene in The Shining, and uh, mm. it said something like. Yeah, yeah th- this this is starting to make a lot more sense now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, man. It is. I was thinking about that today. Like, I, I went out before we did this podcast. I went outside to get the mail and just to kind of get out. And I realized, like, I've been inside for, I don't know, 18 hours or something without having seen the sun. 
like, <laughs> like it was like hard to open my eyes. I'm like, what the shit? And I, I realized like we're we're slowly kind of evolving into this. I don't know. I mean, you seem to be into video games and sci-fi stuff, so you know, I feel like we're falling into all these old sci-fi yeah, right. tro- the tropes, right? Like we're living connected on the internet. Like we don't know what it, the outside is anymore. Like everybody's talking like this via video. Like there's no hanging out. Everybody's wearing a mask and you know, all those old cyberpunk movies, everybody's had a mask, like a gas mask on and shit. I'm like, wow, all these sci-fi writers had it right. Yeah. <laughs> like we've seen this coming. <laughs> and they had a point. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, going back to, to the project, project regeneration. Um, how much work, how many months of work did you guys have to put in to just kind of, because you had all these old recordings of Wayne and yeah. you had to work with. And, uh, you know, there, I'm sure there was work to do with even getting access to those legally and all that other stuff, you know, because it's, it's, you got to go through this, the Wayne family and every, everything, right? Uh, it was years, dude. We've been, we've been working on this for years. Uh, and, you know, we, we initially started with these five demos that Wayne uh, had left behind that he gave to a producer friend of ours who then gave them to me uh, after Wayne passed away. Um, and, and, you know, that that stuff was just bare bones, you know, a riff or two and a drum program. But in, in, a, in a cool way, it, it was kind of like working with Wayne again back in the early days because that's exactly how he would come into the rehearsal room with ideas for songs. You, you know, he'd bring in his Alesis HR-16 drum machine and uh, hit play and say, hey, check this out, and then play a riff over it. And that's pretty much how all the songs on Wisconsin Death Trip got written. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it, in a way, it, it was kind of like working with Wayne again back in the early days. And, and, and it really helped set the tone for, you know, the working on on the rest of the material that that we ended up getting uh just really helped put us back in that in that vibe and mindset of uh you know the early days yeah man yeah i mean it like i said it 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 definitely struck a chord with me it sounded like another you know a good follow-up you know what i mean like it sounded like static x it sounded like you guys had all worked together to produce something that you know was a good tribute to wayne i think I personally think that. I know that there's people out there on the internet they're going to hate about everything. So yeah. that's that's their that's their choice, man. Like that's yeah. I can't really help you there. It's one of those things. I see it all the time with everything, and it's yeah. every single piece of entertainment. Like, I'll be stoked about something, and immediately there's somebody like that's garbage, that's trash. Mm-hmm. Like oh my goodness, why do we you know why do we push that narrative? I don't I don't understand. Yeah. Can't, can't be supportive. Yeah. Um, what are what are some of the I mean, do you have any plans like for this whole lockdown shit? Do you wanna I know I've seen people doing streaming concerts and, and whatnot, charging money for a streaming concert. I, I, I mean is any of that in the works? No, we're we're just uh kind of working on uh well not kind of, we are working on volume two oh, of, okay. of project regeneration. Uh that's the main focus. Uh a couple other things in the works, but uh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just had a five-hour energy drink. Uh, yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, there's a few things in the works, but the main priority is, uh, is uh, volume two of Project right. Regeneration. Has there been uh, any offers for touring? I mean, I, I, I see people touring now, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know, man. You know, we still have uh, a couple of things uh, on the books for the end of the year, but it's uh, I'll I'll be very surprised if any of that happens. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's mostly overseas stuff, um, and you know it, it could get to the point where you know other parts of the world get their shit together before the U.S. does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they'll they'll be like, uh, you know, hey, uh, you Americans, stay home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there is a travel ban, I think, right now. Yeah, I know in certain countries. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know we'll we'll see. I mean I'm not I'm not gonna hold my breath for that stuff. I, I would love for that to happen because I'd love to go out and play some shows. But yeah, you know I'm not I'm not gonna bank on it. <laughs> yeah, it's also it's too much of a risk sometimes too, man. Because I mean I, I was reading up I think it was a couple weeks ago they were like oh Smash Mouth 
through a concert and it, it was packed. And I'm like, that sounds like an awful idea, guys. Yeah, yeah. Like what, uh, that the, the whole Sturgis thing. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, we, we actually did a show uh, a month ago now um, in, in Wisconsin. Um, and, yeah, uh, you know, we, we, we went and did the show and, and they had, uh, like all these different safety precautions, you know, they, they, uh, they limited the number of people. It was outdoors. Um, and, um, you know, they, they uh, made everybody wear masks and then they, they, uh, they cleared out all the dressing room area except for us. And so like we did it as safely as, as we possibly could masked up. Uh, you know, I, we got there like half hour before showtime, did the show and within 10 minutes after got the fuck out of there. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really up to the fans, man. Like, you know, I see a lot yeah. of people blaming, blaming bands like, oh, don't play any shows. You're, you're, you're helping the problem. It's like, well, if the fans can keep their distance. Yeah. And, wear and, a mask, you know. And, and, you know, if, if the the local health officials there at wherever, you know, the, the show's going to be at, if, if these guys who have far more education than I do, right. You know, it, it, I mean, they do this shit for a living. If they say it's, you know, with the proper safety precautions, it, it's safe to do it. Then, you know, who, who am I to say no? Right. I mean, I'm, I'm just a dumb musician. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to get money, you know, get that, get that money, get, get, get out there, get perform like, like you used to, man. Like it's, it's rough that you know, people don't see that. I mean, I, I, I'm not like any, I'm not leaning to any side of any kind of political thing. It's just kind of like if we're, if we're following the rules then it should be okay. That's yeah, the way I say it. I, I mean, you know, at, at the end of the day, it, it, it really, you know, like you said, it, it's up to the fans. If, you know, like when we sit announced we were going to do this, uh, we were like, hey, if you if you're gonna go, uh, you know, the, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, you might want to do the same, and you know, and, and if uh, if you don't feel comfortable, then by all means, do not go, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stay home. If you're worried about the concert, then stay home. That's how yeah. I feel. Yeah, exactly. I don't go to concerts. I mean, I haven't gone to any of those drive-through concerts or anything. I do. I have gone to the comedy store a handful of times here in, in Hollywood. But that's because I know I have friends there. So I go and like we're inside and just kind of spread out. And, you know, ha- like the group of friends are hanging out. We know that we, we're all tested. We've all been tested negative yeah. and we're fine. Yeah, I, I saw something like that uh, go down in, uh, I think, in the UK where they had like uh, platforms with tables set up outside for, for a show. And like you reserved a, a table for like a group of five or six and. They, they, you're all spread out, so I mean, it, there's there's ways to do it, and it can be done safely. You know, it's just uh, yeah, you know, whether or not people want to put in the extra effort to do it. You know? Right. There's the the companies and the and the artists and whoever is involved, the venue and everything have to put the work in first off. Yeah, exactly. But also, you know, it's up to the fans to kind of just not be crazy people. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't. And then this is no hit on Smash Mouth, but. Is Smash Mouth worth getting COVID? Like, <laughs> come on, man! Like, it, it, this was like a fan, I guess you know. I mean, I mean, you know, it, 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 if I was in my twenties and and Slayer was playing, you know, I, I done it too. <laughs> I mean, I, just don't, I mean, it's, it's hard to go to a Slayer show and not mosh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's weird. I mean, who knows? I've been seeing shit. I got an email from my health insurance people that they're doing tests for vaccines now. So we might get out of this sooner than later, hopefully. Oh, hopefully, man. Yeah. And if not, I mean, you uh, obviously are a gamer. You got a bunch of controllers back there, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, us gamers, we we tend to be fine with not going out because we got stuff yeah, to do I, at home. <laughs> keep myself entertained. Though. There's always something to do, and. You know, be, be, between all, all this crap and and just trying to keep the house clean, you know, I got enough <laughs> to do. So. <laughs> for sure, man, for sure. What are you playing these days? Um, Destiny 2. Um, um, 
uh, what did I just finished? Uh, uh, Doom Eternal, um, the Resident Evil Three remake. Uh, I heard that one was short. I haven't played it yet, but I heard it, it was like six hours. It's short, but I liked it. It was good, man. But and and it made me uh, go back and uh, finish up uh, the Resident Evil Two remake. Mm, that one was great. Yeah, because I had left one of the one of the campaigns unfinished, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go back and, and finish up this this last one. Man. And I, that was really good too. Um, and then um, I've been doing uh, Half Life Alex. Oh, um, the VR. Yeah, yeah. I, I started it out uh, with just the regular, um, you know, Vive controllers, the wands, and it was cool. But I really wanted to try it out with uh, with the, the the Valve Index controllers, and. Um, I just got them in, so I, I gotta I gotta hook them up and and, and try them out. But yeah, I, I think it's gonna make, make the experience a little better. So. Did uh, so I've had an issue with VR because I I like it, but I can't do it for too long. It gives me uh, nausea. Oh really? But, yeah, I don't know what it is, but like I start to get kind of lightheaded and kind of. Um, yeah, but I, I it has something to do with the with the refresh rate uh, on, on the actual headset. Um, I think the um, just the way the brain picks up things and, and having it so close to you, um, I think having a higher higher refresh rate on the headset helps with that. I mean, that's okay. just what I heard. You know, like, I, well, don't listen to me. I'm a stupid musician. It makes okay. sense, though. It makes sense because you think of uh, the, like it's kind of like a lag from yeah. you know, the, the screen mm-hmm. to your brain or whatever. So. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense to me. Um yeah, I've been holding off on buying one. I, I'm waiting to buy the, the Oculus 2, because I know they talked about it already. Uh, Oculus Quest 2, sorry. Oh, and, yeah. Um, I, I guess you haven't heard the, the big controversy with uh, Oculus now, because you know it's owned by uh, Facebook, right? Facebook, right. And they want you to have a Facebook account. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it, man. If they own the company, I guess. <laughs> and And so, like, they're slowly phasing out the oculus name and and at some point it's just going to be called the facebook headset oh. <laughs> i don't know about all that yeah I, mean, I, know, right? I do want the quest uh i want i was going to buy the quest but uh since i heard the rumors that they were like oh we're going to work on a better one like mm-hmm. okay maybe i can hold off because if yeah. this one's giving me nausea i might as well wait and see if yeah. it get better yeah. you know mm-hmm. Yeah, because I do want to play that Half Life game. I saw a trailer for the new Medal of Honor that they're doing for it, and it looks insane, man. I don't mm. know if you saw it. No, I haven't. I got you. It, look, you're in a war, and like you can actually catch. Like if somebody throws a grenade at you, you can catch it and throw it back. Yeah. <laughs> they got you like defusing a bomb by like actually clipping the wires and shit, and like oh, yeah, wow. I don't know. It's like really like there's a secret room where you play a piano and you hit certain. You have to hit the the right notes to unlock the door to get into. So I'm like, all right. That's nice. kind of cool. Feels yeah. feels like they're getting better at it too. You know, I think yeah. I played the the Batman one. That was a weird yeah. one. Mm-hmm. You gotta like pick up the phone with your hand and just trying to like maneuver your hand to. Yeah, to right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird, man. And I feel like that's the future, though. I feel like that that's just gonna keep getting better, yeah, and better. And eventually, we're gonna live in that Ready Player One life. You know. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I'm. I'm. I'm looking forward to that day and and then i'll definitely never leave the house <laughs> right i'm looking forward to that neural link that that elon musk is working on yeah right <laughs> you, you, that thing I'm, I'm all about that if i can just post something on facebook by thinking about it and not having to actually do it right plug me into the matrix let's go <laughs> plug me in <laughs> plug me in i want that filet mignon from cypher yeah. in the matrix you know that <laughs> yeah man i it is. It is. You know, <laughs> I, I agree that, you know, being human's cool and, and going out and uh, doing things athletically are awesome. You know, I love sports. I love MMA, whatever. But but me personally, you know, I would like to keep going after this flesh body is done. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I think it'd be cool to, to keep yeah. doing things, learning guess- things. Yeah, I got shit to do, man. <laughs> um, is there anything happening in the Fear Factory camp? I know you were, you know, involved with them. Yeah, uh, I, I really don't know that. You know, I'm just a hired gun with those guys. Um, I mean, as far as I know, I'm I'm still in the band. I haven't heard otherwise from either from either Dino or Burton. Uh, um, but yeah, they they, they got uh, it, their 
uh, legal issues, I guess, to, to still to deal with. So, yeah, I, I really don't know. Okay. You'd have to uh, ask them. You have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody commented with, uh, when are we getting another Assassino record? Yeah. Uh, well, um, Dino sent me two tracks to work on. I finished vocals and bass on one, uh, working on lyrics for the second one. Um, so yeah, it, 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 we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I mean, that's good to know. That's good to know. No time frame as of now, obviously, because there's really no time frame for anything. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Whenever things get back to normal, but yeah. But cool, man. Um, yeah. I mean, that's all I had. I wanted to talk a little bit about the record and you know share a little story with you about you know we've we've I've been connected with you guys for a long time. I mean, I have pictures with you for many years in the May like. I ran into you once randomly here in LA before I moved out here in uh oosh, I don't even know what 2006 maybe um out yeah. at the uh, at the whiskey. I yeah. came out here I came out here for Thanksgiving with the family. Oh wow. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and we were like it was a crazy night too cuz I I'm from Florida and uh I'm I show up here now and now I live here but I show up here to Thanksgiving for the family. Everybody goes to bed at 7. Fuck that! I'm in LA. I'm going out. Yeah. <laughs> and I went out to the to the Rainbow Grill and and the Roxy next door. And I think it was Nonpoint was performing. Ah, okay. Or yeah, it was like Nonpoint and Machine Head and Endo. And these are all dudes from Florida. So I was like, oh, these are my boys. I ran into them outside. We talked for a while, and then I ended up seeing you at the Rainbow Grill. I'm like, I need to live in Hollywood. I feel <laughs> like this is where shit's happening. You know? <laughs> yeah. That the, the the Rainbow was a uh a pretty regular hangout for for me for for a while there yeah man i mean good, good times man it's hard to not have a good time there there's just the people that show up and you know the cheap drinks and whatnot but yeah i mean especially if, if you're in the people watching man the the rainbow is, is an awesome spot for you, you oh, get yeah. all kinds of different characters and and then every once in a while you'll, you'll see somebody like yeah you know like like I, I once saw James Brown walk in the door. You know, I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, that's one guy." And, and everybody just stood up, started clapping. You know, that like, <laughs> ah, fucking respect right there, man. Yeah. Everybody just puts their fucking meals down, puts their drinks down, got up, started clapping, dude. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. I, I actually snuck upstairs once and I saw like the little closed off area that they have. That's like the vampires. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's such a weird like like why is that there? like really? <laughs> they actually do shows up there every once in a while. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. That's awesome, dude. But uh, yeah, man, just wanted to catch up with you. And and so uh, the plans are volume two for Project Regeneration. Um, so it's more tracks with Wayne, or is it yeah. mostly zero? Yeah, more more tracks with Wayne. Uh, okay. the, the majority of it will still uh, uh, consist of, of Wayne's vocal performances. How much more do you guys have? Like, is there going to be a three-two down the road? Oh no, we're, we're done with two. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, if you're listening to this and you're a fan of Static X, I I checked it out, and I got to tell you, it's you know, if you're a fan of Static X, you will enjoy this. It's a really awesome tribute you guys did. Um, you know, and I thank you for it. It's cool to hear Wayne again after so many years. Um, uh, and yeah. It's, it's it's awesome, dude. I appreciate your time coming to the show. Thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. Uh, where do the people find you on, on social media if they want to pick up, you know, follow you and also pick up the album? Uh, I know we got we have pages on Facebook and Instagram and uh, what's the other one? Twitter, I think. Uh, I'm horrible at the whole social media thing. I, I, can, barely, I can barely manage a Facebook, you know? Um, right. Um. But yeah, the, the the band has pages on on all those platforms. So yeah, very cool, brother. Well, hey, take care, stay safe, and uh, you know, hopefully one day we'll run into each other again. Like I've run into you at so many fucking shows in in LA since I moved out here, that uh, I'm hoping that one day we can do that again. When they start having shows again, man, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for you. All right, brother. Right take on, care. man. Cheers. Take it easy, bro. <laughs>